All right, people, here is the deck profile for my Demise Gladiator Beast. So, if I mess up anything when it comes to this deck, I apologize. Uh, this is actually my first time actually playing Gladiator Beast. I know of Gladiator Beast. I played against Gladiator Beast. I would never liked Gladiator Beast because whenever I would duel this deck, they would always open up the War Chariot, and that would piss me the fuck off. Oh, my God, that would piss me off. But uh, it was nice to play. You know, it's a controlled deck. It's kind of my... Uh, Kind of my boat, you know, it's interesting that I kind of skipped past it. I guess I was just so salty to lose into it all the time, especially since this was the era when I was playing a lot of Ubel when this deck came out, uh, that I would just lose, I would lose outright. Uh, but here we go, Demise Gladiator Beast. Um, I know one of my friends were actually talking while we were on our trip at Utah, and they were like, oh my god, someone did this amazing thing, they did Demise Gladiator Beast, and it's just like, yeah, I, I did that. Yeah, <laughs> and and I I I took a, a couple of partners. Uh, I know Alexis sent me the deck of uh, one of their friends who did really well with Glads, and you know I had you know talked to Randy. He he's his one of his decks that he's always played in his life was uh, Glads as well. So I had some help. I had some help. I did I didn't go in cold turkey, but I decided you know what. This deck, I mean, what the majority of the time I do? I, like, summon a Gladiator Beast, set a Wabaku, set some back row, pass to you, you know? So I was like, fuck it. Let me just play some card of mine and, you know, go stupid plus off of this stupid card that Konami should definitely hit. So let's go ahead and drop into it. So starting off, we run two Augustus. Uh, you're probably wondering why the Augustus, because he's not the greatest of Gladiator Beasts. I'd say the worst thing about him is that sometimes you can call. You draw him and you, yeah, you know? But he's really good because you can tag into him. When you see that we're running three Bastari, he can summon a Gladiator Beast monster from your hand. So there'll be times where I'll be like, attack, tag out, Augustus, Augustus, summon the, the Bastari from my hand. Main phase two, go into Gazarus, pop your two cards, you know? So uh, that's the reason why. And also you can do some rank eight plays uh, because he can summon himself. So if you have the Augustus in your hand, you can tag, tag in Augustus, Augustus can summon Augustus, and then bam, there's a rank eight play right there. And we already know, you got Felgren, you got Hope. So there are some actually pretty strong rank eight plays that can be done. So, uh, to Augustus, uh, the reason why it's not at one, because you could probably run it at one, because it's number generated, I do not want to, like, I don't want to draw it, so put into one would just make me draw it more because of number generator. So, two is like, if you don't want to draw something that often, just put it at two, and you won't draw it, but it's a nice number. Uh, to Darius, Darius is great as well, uh, he's pretty much like the counterpart to Augustus, he summons from the graveyard, uh, the effects are negated, uh, but... You know, whether you have Bastari in your hand or Bastari in your graveyard, you're summoning up Bastari and you're going to go poppity pop pop. And that's exactly what you want with Gazarus. Uh, so, to the Darius, uh, the reason why it's two and definitely two is because if you draw into the Darius, you can't tag onto the Darius and Darius can't tag onto himself. You know, so you want to always make sure that there's a Darius in the deck to tag out into. So, uh, you run three Bastari. Three Bastari, uh, like I say, Get it from the hand, so that's consistent. You can get it from the graveyard, that's consistent. You can pitch it with Twin Twister. So I wanted to make sure that I saw Pistari. Pistari is the key point, uh, it's, the, it's, it's the card of the deck, you know? Uh, if you're not using Pistari, you're not going to Geyser, so you're not going to Geyser. So you're not playing Glads, in my opinion, because that's let's go, you know? So, uh, definitely through Pistari. You know, you could probably, if you weren't doing the whole Twin Twister thing like I'm doing, where you can like pitch the Pistari, the Twin Twister pop, and then tack, tag down the Darius, Darius, and summon back the Pistari that you just pitched for Twin Twister, then you probably could run it too. But because I'm running the Twin Twister price, I'm like, yes, let's go three, you know? Uh, run one Lakari. Lakari is good, but he's not fantastic, and that's why he got cut down to one. He's not tag on two, he goes up to 2100 when he's tagging two. And of course, the only reason why you run him is because Da da da, Harry Clean up. So that's the only reason why you run him. I don't think I went to Clean Up Kills. I think maybe once in the entire month that it was on uh, Daily Dolls' deck. But I mean, you still run one. Uh, you run one of Quest. Quest is great. It grabs you back your War Chariot. That's literally what you do. You attack. You tag on the middle Quest. Quest will grab you back that War Chariot that you used. Rinse and repeat, you know? Uh, and we run one Melio because sometimes I run into problems where uh, I can't get over a monster. So I'll have like a weak monster, a strong monster, I'll attack. To the weak monster, tag down to Mamelia, Mamelia popped the strong monster. There's actually times where I took Mamelia out and I was like, oh, I regret this, and put him right back in. So, then I say you should run Mamelia, and then you can run Retardi, Retardi too. Retardi is actually pretty decent to that to banish a monster from opponent's graveyard. Doesn't scoff at. I'm not sure if I main deck it if I was playing Gladiator Beast because it's situational and it's a little slow, but yeah. Uh, so, that's all the monsters. 10, but there's technically 13 because, of course, we have our Gladiator Proving Ground, so I get to add a level 4 lower Gladiator Beast monster from my deck in hand, mostly Pastari. So, you know, there would be times where I'm like, summon a Glad, set some back row, then my opponent doesn't do much, and I'm like, okay, Proving Grounds, get my Pastari, set it, because I can contact while it's set, I know, I definitely know that about Glad. Then go right into the guy's eyes, pop shit, and clean up house. So, you already know. You know. Like, if we're going to run 10 monsters, then I should at least run maximum consistency in my search card, right? And, you know, if, if it's dead, and at least it's not a monster, it's like card demise and shit. I can just set it and then play it later. I uh, run double twin twister. 
uh, like I said, back row is, is a kind of thing, you know, but with me popping your shit like ours, I don't need too much. Like, I just need to simply clear up, and then, you know, you clear up the back row, this will handle the monsters, and then yeah, maybe possibly the back row as well. Uh, just watch out for strike. Strike and shit all over your day. But, uh, yeah, so... I, was, I went double. At first, I was like triple and I was running for big lines and all that, but I was like, I want more back row. Like, if I'm gonna run fucking card demise, I want to fucking run fucking card demise. I want more back row. So, that's the reason. That's what happened to the other uh, Twin Twisters. But I think two is fine. I think, I think similar with Solemn Strike, unless you're in like the body stack. Three should be a little quaggy. Same thing with Twin Twisters. So, then, uh, Cardamize, definitely, you know. Uh, I played Cardamize before. I played that uh, that uh, Demise Cos uh, Cosmogenon, so I already had an uh, inkling of how to play a Demise deck, and, you know, it's my cup of tea. It's just, you know, Control, and because I'm playing Control in all this background, I mean, why not get to play this broken-ass card and get to draw three because I'm just playing a particular deck the way that it's being played. It's totally fair, you know? And then 2 all because triple all you can clock too so i don't i don't if you're playing demise I don't, i'd recommend three two i would never recommend three power duality because you don't want to activate power duality and then reveal until power duality and if you've got that power duality you're a turn slow you know and while i can stun myself and you know make myself go a little bit slower and can't special summon the turn i want to sometimes special summon. i mean this contact that's a special summon so i don't want to you know slow myself down all the time all right and uh that's the spells so uh 10 spells i mean 10 monsters 10 spells and 20 traps, let's go. Uh, Solemn Warning, Van Nuyen is bottomless, you know. Uh, two endless, because I want to sit you down. One of the best ways for this deck to do its plays is to just sit your monster down and then attack into you while you're in defense mode, because I'm gonna guarantee that uh, that tag out. You know, I pretty much guarantee that tag out, and uh, you know, I have to worry about dying when you face up, and you can't flip up until I do something. There's been plenty of times where I hit them with the endless trap hole or the quaking mirror force, and I just leave their monster set there until I'm good and ready. And whether it's to be to attacking them and tag out, or literally just pop them with the guys hours while they're set. So, uh, I, the reason why I went with two endless and three quaking is because endless only hits technically one monster. You know, like unless like pendulum summon, then I can hit everything, and that's great. But you know, I'm not gonna be facing pendulum deck all the time until summon like one monster and I get one endless slot. This gets everything in attack position. So. You know, that's great. Just be like, you know, one monster, unless you're pendulum summoning, everything. Everything, everything. Um, I said triple Psalm Strike. Uh, I said, I'm feeling like Psalm Strike should be at two unless you're playing a Demise deck. If you're not playing Demise deck and you want to play some strikes, I definitely recommend two to the one. Which is why I feel like Konami, when you when you hit Strike, you should probably limit it because you only need two. So, uh, triple War Trade. I mean, come on, this card's so good. And Effect Monster activates the fact... And I have a Gladiator Beast, negate and destroy it, counter trap, let's go. And then I can grab it back with the quest. So good, so good. Uh, triple Wabaku. Wabaku's good as well. Um, monsters can't be destroyed battle and I don't take damage, but we still battle, so I get to tag out. It's really great, you know. I can do it when an opponent declares our attack. Uh, then we play Triple Quaking. Like I said, Quaking's good, like Endless, sit you down. The thing unlike Wabaku is that we didn't battle. You you declared your attack, but I set you down, and then we're not, you know, we didn't battle. So I would eventually have to attack into you, flip you up, and then you know, tag out, which can be detrimental depending on what you do with the monsters that are set. So uh, this card's good, this card is also good, but I think these two synergistically are really great. And then Triple Call of the Haunted, because I'm playing Demise, so I can card Demise, you know, send my monster, send my hand, you know, and then revive the monsters later. You know, there's been plenty of them. This card of the Haunted saved me so many times. I'll be like, all right, summon a Glad, call the Haunted, summon Bastari, Gazaris, you know, the call is so good in this deck, so good. You know, this deck was actually one of my favorite decks of this uh, month. Uh, for this uh, August through September for Daily Duel. It was, it was really fun. Uh, one higher Klinos, and he said, you summon him, you, and he does his job. Three guys are, there's actually, I was at two, that two, but I opened him with three because I kept running the, like, Solemn Strike and shit, where it would die and it wouldn't tag back into my extra decks. So I wanted to make sure that I had my guys are always, you know? Um, got some rank eight plays, like I said, with these two. I kind of get a little bit too rank eight happy. Like, if I can make an eight, then I throw in, like, a nice chunk of my extra deck. Like, what, 15, out of my 15 cards, five the cards are committed to just that one play. But I like the toolbox of it. So, you know, Felgram, he's good in his own way. Hope is good in his own way. Then the the Cypher to the uh, to the full armor to the Cypher blade. I mean, that's a double card pop right there. So, uh, I said, I'm getting a little bit too play hungry, but it's there. Uh, Castell, Heartland to attack and go for game. I actually just wonder where I could have done this and I fucked up and I, I dragged the duel out longer than. But you know, hindsight's 20. 20 Cowboy for game. The dweller because it's dweller and then Utopia, Utopia to Lightning. So, uh, there you go. There is my Demise Gladiator Beast deck. Like, this deck was a lot of fun uh, and. I mean, I made it. I made it. I'm, I'm actually really proud of this. That for a person who's never played Gladiator and Beasts, that got turned out really well. And I think in Daily Duels, I won more often than I lost. So it's just a really, really great fun deck. You know, uh, I give it. I give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. If you want to go ahead and take it, try it, play test it. You know, more power to you.
So I hope that you guys enjoyed the deck profile. Like I said, more deck profiles for the rest of the week. Tomorrow, we begin the deck profile for Zephyr. Uh, Zephyr almost stayed for another month. Almost, but it didn't make it. So Zephyr's are out. So deck profile for Zephyr. And I actually switched things up. Uh, someone actually pointed it out. One of my viewers started trying out. Um, it was supposed to be that Gaia was supposed to be a single deck and Tremids were supposed to be a tag deck. I switched it. And I thought it was an exact decision. Tremids are a terrible tag deck. Terrible, you know. Uh, they they have no synergy when it's my opponent's turn. They really don't do anything. They really don't have too much stun outside of being controlled during you know my turn. Uh, it runs multiple field spells, meaning the attack partner can't run field spells. It's just bad, you know. I was discussing it with Renny, and he plays tremens, and he's like, no, you can't you can't do the attack. So I was like, you know what? Let's just switch it. You're still gonna get your guy. You're still gonna get your tremens, but. We're switching it, so Gaia will be attack deck, which I believe this deck can handle being attack deck much easier than Tremids, while Tremids will be a single deck on Friday. You know, it's an exact decision. I generally don't do it. If it's a single deck, I generally keep it a single deck, tag, second tag, and it fucks me, it fucks me, but, I mean, this is the final lineup for Daily Duels. You know, this is it. We're going to be taking this to uh, the finale of Daily Duels, so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, everything is at least entertaining for these uh, last couple of episodes, because we got less than... 30 episodes left, you know, we got less than a month to go. Yeah, well, yes, but no, because we don't do weekends, you know, so. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, deck profile. If you haven't seen it already, the deck that will be replacement on Wednesday's Mecha Phantom Beast uh, is already up, so thanks for watching, thanks for support, and I will see you guys tomorrow.